Mark Faber, author of uh, the magazine Gloom, Boom and Doom. Mark, uh, the biggest worry for global money managers is that what will happen to central bank liquidity? There are concerns of U.S. Fed tra tapering of the quantitative easing, but Japan and China are likely to continue with their stimulus. Do you see any changes in easy money going forward? Personally, I think that central banks around the world will continue to pursue easy monetary policies and that there will be very little tapering. But obviously, in the unlikely case, and I repeat, in the unlikely case, the U.S. economy was very strong and we would have strong growth in the United States uh, in uh, half a year's or a year's time, then they will reduce the purchases of assets. But in my scenario, where the economy stays weak and continues to disappoint, I don't think that they will taper much. In fact, Mr. Bernanke is most likely to retire, and some other Fed members, they make uh, Mr. Bernanke look like a hawk. In other words, they're even more dovish, and they are, have argued for unlimited QEs uh, forever. And I think that is likely to be the case. Right. Mark, you also talked about QE. You don't see recovery in the U.S. in the near term. Do you see downside to the S&P then? Yes. Uh, first of all, if you look at the S&P, from the low, March 2009, to recently, it was up more than 140%. And since 2010, 2011, most European markets and emerging markets haven't performed well. Brazil is down something like 30% of the peak, and as I just mentioned to you, if you adjust for the depreciation of the rupee, the Indian market hasn't performed well either. The only game in town in the last 12 to 18 months has been the U.S. So you have most markets in the world going down and the U.S. Uh, going up and up and up. And uh, in my view, it is very likely that the U.S. market has already peaked out at 1,687 on May 22nd on the S&P. And if the market makes a new high, in my view, it would be only with a few stocks making new highs. The majority of stocks will not make new highs. And it is also remarkable, last week when the market dropped quite significantly, there were days when on the New York Stock Exchange, there were 500 new lows on a 12-month basis. When this happens, it tells you that internally the market isn't very strong. Yeah, market breadth uh, clearly is a concern not only for Indian markets but for U.S. markets as well. Mark, but Asian equities in past few sessions have recovered on back of lower than expected GDP growth, which has also revived hope that the U.S. Fed will continue with the bond buying program. What is your view on Asian equities and do you see some more downside risk for, for Asian equities? Well, in Asia, we had uh, very diverging performances. You had markets like the Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand, that are up three, four times from the 2009 lows. These markets are very extended. Uh, the Chinese market, Vietnam, and until last October, Japan, had been in a declining mode. And uh, in some cases, uh, very depressed, like Japan in October of last year, uh, it was uh, it had been in a downtrend since 1989. So these markets are probably reaching a buying range. In the case of India, I'm not so sure there is a great hurry to buy anything, because. 
the market may not go down meaningfully, but the currency would seem to me to still be vulnerable. Mark, really good having you on the show. Appreciate you taking the time out and joining us with all your views.